Hello, my name is Richard Lamore. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in Olympia, Washington, and I'd like to present a ankle trauma case uh, utilizing the AITFL, ATFL internal brace ligament repair augmentation with syndesmosis tightrope uh, in the setting of uh, fibular fracture fixation. My patient is a 43-year-old female who tripped and fell going downstairs and had a delayed presentation approximately three to four weeks before she came to the office. And this was secondary to uh, her social setting where uh, she lives in a uh, remote, more rural uh, location. These are our radiographs. As you can see, she has a Weber B lateral malleolus fracture with comminution and significant shortening and an unstable mortis. Uh, her syndesmosis was uh, found to be grossly unstable as well with uh, rotational and sagittal instability. Now, the ATFL and CFL were also a concern uh, for injury because of the significant uh, shortening of the lateral malleolus and there was a gross instability uh, of these lateral ligaments as well with positive anterior drawer testing and positive tailored tilt testing. This is the surgical construct uh, that it was selected from our intraoperative radiographs. For the Weber B lateral malleolus fracture, we selected a titanium distal fibular locking plate for our fixation. The syndesmosis instability uh, was addressed with the syndesmosis tightrope XP and the AITFL internal brace. Also, a ATFL CFL repair was done primarily, and an ATFL internal brace was included. I selected the Arthrex titanium distal fibrillar locking plate uh, because it allows excellent versatility when combining osseous fixation with soft tissue repair augmentation. And these design features have uh, allowed me to incorporate uh, the soft tissue repair, including the tightrope uh, and if the internal brace uh, with the suture holes uh, in the distal portion of the plate, uh, even after the plate has been applied to the bone. The tight rope uh, was selected over a screw fixation because the multiple level one randomized control uh, trial studies uh, have confirmed this. And after uh, excellent coronal stability was achieved, uh, there was uh, mild uh, residual rotational stability uh, that was present. And uh, these uh, biomechanical studies uh, have shown that isolated AITFL uh, ruptures, uh, injuries, uh, can still present uh, significant rotational and sagittal instability. I selected the AITFL internal brace to address the uh, AITFL tear. And this combination of repair for the syndesmosis, uh, I feel is uh, more anatomic uh, than other options um, and provided excellent stability from time zero. Uh, which permitted early weight bearing for this patient, and it's an easy construct to apply. The internal brace fiber tape was passed in the anterior proximal uh, suture hole with a nitinol loop and placed into a 475 swivel lock anchor into the distal tibia. And uh, a line-to-line -line technique was used after the ankle uh, syndesmosis was reduced. For the ATFL-CFL primary pair uh, with internal brace augmentation, uh, this was done uh, in routine fashion using two mini suture tack uh, biocomposite anchors um, along the anterior lateral aspect of the lateral malleolus. And the internal brace augmentation was done by passing the nitinol loop in the anterior distal hole and placing this in a 3-5 uh, biocomposite swivel lock anchor into the uh, insertion of the ATFL at the lateral process of the talus. Uh, which has uh, been previously described. The arrow shows the distal uh, suture hole uh, where the fiber tape for the AITFL uh, was uh, used to include internal brace for our construct. The post-op course uh, for this patient uh, selected was an accelerated uh, rehab course um, as she uh, lives in a rural location with uh, limited access for physical therapy uh, and we anticipated she would uh, be weight-bearing earlier and requiring mobilization earlier. Uh, thus, after two weeks, she was placed in a cam boot and protected in this boot as she uh, progressed her weight-bearing. And at six weeks, she was transitioned to a supportive athletic shoe uh, with an ankle brace and has done very well. At 10 weeks post-op, she returns for her follow-up appointment and her fracture is well healed and the mortise is well stabilized. Our post-operative symptoms are largely resolved and she is able to return to work.